How do you compare to some of your competitors? Pick any anybody you want to highlight. Obviously, I already mentioned NetJets. You don't have to use them if you don't want to. But I'm curious yeah. how you fit in the market competitively uh, versus some of the other ones that are bigger or smaller. Yeah. So as it pertains to NetJets, you know, difference from service level perspective of fractional versus, you know, traditional charter and, and membership product, but also in terms of the fleet. Um, NetJets is a closed fleet offering. So if you are a NetJets fractional owner and you want to substitute off of your aircraft or interchange, yeah. uh, upgrade or downgrade for an itinerary, NetJets is going to be pulling solely from their fleet. Um, at PJS, we have a much broader offering and larger fleet capabilities as a result. Okay. And that plays a really large role. Stuart, you mentioned cancellation. And, you know, one of the nasty realities of private aviation is, is mechanicals as well. And recovering from a mechanical. PJS having an open fleet, we're able to be much faster and nimbler than, uh, you know, a service provider such as NetJets. It's a phenomenal service. But in certain instances, if they have to recover, they may end up in the situation where, you know, the traveler or the client is having to wait for them to pull from, uh, you know, the next available aircraft within their closed fleet versus being able to grab the nearest aircraft that's going to service the client. Yeah, to that end, as a, as a layman, bigger seems like it's better. I mean, it just it almost, you know, the bigger the, the availability uh, of your fleet, the fewer positioning um, expenses there could be for, with, so I'm sure you can explain it better than me, but, you know, if you were in uh, Atlantic City, you know, you wanted a plane in Atlantic City, but the only other one was at Morristown or or, uh, or the like, uh, Teterboro in New York, you would have to pay or someone would have to pay for that position, reposition. So I would assume that, uh, you know, the bigger is kind of the better for um, for you all in terms of, of both positioning and then, uh, as you said, about cancellations and, and aircraft. It, it's certainly, certainly helpful in that sense. And then I think one of the other key considerations that, you know, private aviation users have to be aware of is primary service area um, for certain programs. So a lot of, you know, fractional share programs and even jet card and membership products, you know, they have a very defined primary service area, generally the continental United States, and then, you know, some asterisks around travel to the Caribbean, Alaska, Hawaii, a handful of providers have uh, additions for transcontinental to Europe. Um, but when you get into certain destinations, you're operating outside of the traditional primary service areas. And part of the reason for that is the complexity of the operations. So if you were to discuss um, an itinerary that involves Africa, that's when you're getting into an itinerary that is, you know, more complex and beyond the traditional wheelhouse of some of those providers. Um, whereas, you know, for PJS, we've actually operated extensively within Africa. We've had a client with a dedicated G4 in Africa for about two months. Um, but to operate into and out of Africa, you're normally staging in Europe and then taking a European-tailed aircraft uh, down onto the continent. 